did you not understand that you did have a degree of personal power over politicians? No, again, and I, I just didn't see it like that. I saw my role as editor of The Sun as a very responsible one, and, the, and, and um, I, I enjoyed my job and every part of that job, um, but particularly, as, as I've said in my witness statement, I enjoyed campaigns and I enjoyed, you know, bridging a gap between public opinion and public policy, mm -hmm. taking on concerns of the readers. So I don't accept it in the power terms that you keep describing it as. Your, your real interest is people, isn't it, Mrs. Brooks? You're a very empathetic person. You understand how human beings think and feel, don't you? Well, I, I do like people, yes, yeah. <laughs> and some journalists as a main do try and be empathetic, otherwise no one would tell them anything. You, you understand the, the potential of, of, if I can put it in this way, personal alchemy, how you can get people to do, or might get people to do what you want, and indeed what they are trying to do with you. Don't you, don't you get any of that? Um, I'm not sure. Quite, I'm not sure quite what you mean. Um, I'm not in, suggesting in anything sinister. Here. Right. I'm suggesting <laughs> that I'm talking about the really the power of human empathy. Some people are empathetic, and it's completely lost on them. Mm -hmm. but it's not lost on you, is it? Well, I, I hope I hope to be empathetic in life to people. Yes. Um, well, I just I just wonder whether you you sense or sensed because um, we're talking about the past now how the effect you might have had on politicians, that some of them may even have been afraid of you. Is that true? Um, I, I, I literally, do, like I say, I, I don't see politicians as these sort of um, easily scared people. Like I say, most of them are pretty strong, ambitious and highly motivated. So. Let's see if we can just, just take one case study and okay. see whether there's any, right. any validity in that case study. You, you, you remember the McCann serialization That is case? That's idea, yes. Which, um, actually, we've got Dr. McCann's evidence in relation to this in the bundle, haven't we, at page 57 under tab 6. We have that there. We're working for the transcript of the evidence this inquiry received on the 23rd of, of November 2011. Right, yes. Which, which, and if you look at page 57, line 11, the question I asked was you talk about a meeting with Rebecca Brooks. Are you on the right page? They're, they're not numbered in that way, but. We, they are actually. Oh, it's 57, is it, at the bottom? No, no. it says 15 at the bottom, but each page has four oh, yes. pages on. Right, I've got it. Sorry, thank you, sir. Yes. The question was, you talk about a meeting with Rebecca Brooks which led to a review of your case, a formal review. Just to assist us a little bit with that, can you recall when that was? And Dr. McCann's answer was, I think it's probably worth just elaborating a little bit because it's quite a complex decision-making process. Use International actually bid for the rights to the book along with Harper Collins. And one of their pitches was the fact that they would serialise the book across all their titles. We were somewhat horrified at the prospect of that, given the way we'd been treated in the past, and the deal was actually done with the publishers, Transworld, that excluded serialisation. Now, we were subsequently approached by News International and Associated to serialise the book, and after much deliberation, we had a couple of meetings. And what swung the decision uh, to serialise with News International um, was News International committed to backing the campaign and the search for Madeleine. So, pausing there, there was going to be serialisation in both the Sunday Times and the Sun, I believe. Do you recall that? I do. I think this is the year 2010, by which time you were Chief Executive Officer, weren't you? That's, that's correct. And the, what was the price that you paid for the serialisation? Can you remember? Uh, I, c I can't remember actually. I th it's hundreds of thousands of pounds. A million, we've been told. Is no, it wasn't. It wasn't a million. Um, 
half a million maybe. I, I can't. I can't remember. I mean, I can. I can. There are ways to find out, but I, I'm not sure it was a million. Okay. Well, then the paraphrase the rest of what Dr. McCann said because he he couldn't take this issue much further is that. Your intervention was successful in securing a review of the case. Do you understand that? I, I, he, you, you ask if it was successful and he says it was, yes. Yes. Can you remember anything about that intervention? Um, actually, if, to, to, just, to just go back, the reason I was um, involved as Chief Executive was it in, because it um, concerned two newspapers, the Sunday Times and the Sun. So if you like, I, I, I did the, the deal with Harper Collins from a, from a corporate point of view and then left it to the two editors, John Witherow and Dominic Moen, to decide the different approaches. Um, I had, I'd always got on very well with um, Dr. McCann and Kate McCann um, throughout their incredible traumatic time. And in fact, I think they... they <coughs> if asked, would be very positive about the sun, actually. Um, and in this case, I thought that Dominic Moen's idea to run the campaign um, to, to, uh, again, uh, for this review of Madeleine's case by a Home Secretary was the right thing for the sun to do, and I think the Sunday Times did the book. Um, and so my intervention was at that point, as in was the original discussion with Dr. McCann, um, I don't think I spoke to Theresa May, uh, Theresa May directly, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, Dominic Moore may have done. Let's see whether we can agree or disagree on what might have happened. But when you were discussing the arrangements with the McCanns, mm -hmm. you asked if there was anything more they wanted. Do you recall that? Maybe, yes. And Mr. or Dr. Jerry McCann said that he wanted a... UK police review of the case. Do you remember him saying that? I do, yes. And do you remember your answer being, is that all? Um, well, I may have said it slightly more politely, is there anything else before we conclude this meeting? But I don't particularly remember saying that, but maybe I did, yes. I, I'm not putting, suggesting to you that, that it was impolite mm. in just summarising the gist of but what may, you said. Maybe, yes. We have been going through a list of um, um, issues that Dr. McCann and Kate McCann wanted to be assured of before we went forward with the serialisation, so possibly. Did you then take the matter up with Downing Street Direct? No. Did you not tell Downing Street that the Sun was going to demand a review and that the Prime Minister should agree to the request as the Sun had supported him at the last election? No, in fact, um, I didn't speak to Downing Street or the Home Secretary about this, but I know that Dominic Mohan or Tom Newton Dunn will have, will have spoken to them. Pardon me? That th they will have spoken directly to either Number 10 or the Home Office. I'm not sure. You'll have to ask them. Probably the Home Office, I would have thought. The Sun wanted an immediate result and that a, a letter would be posted all over the front page from the McCanns to the Prime Minister asking for a review unless Downing Street agreed. Did that happen? I think that's how the Sun launched the campaign from memory, was with a letter, yes. But the Home Secretary was told that if she agreed to the review, the page one letter would not run. Do you remember that? No, I don't. But his um, Secretary of State did not respond in time. You did publish the letter on the front page. Do you remember that? I, d I do remember the Sun kicking off the campaign with a letter, yes. <coughs> and you don't believe there was any conversation or indeed threat to the Secretary of State. Is that right? I'm pretty sure there would have not been a threat, but I'll, you'll have to, uh, we'll have to ask Dominic Moen because... Like I said, my involvement was to discuss the campaign um, in, the, in, the, in the continued search for Madeline with the McCanns and to do the deal with, on the book and to, they, they, because of, I'd done so many campaigns in the past, mm. they wanted my opinion, 
But after that, I left it to both editors mm. to execute the campaign. Because what I've been told is that you then intervened personally, Mrs. Brooks. You told Number 10 that unless the Prime Minister ordered the review by the Metropolitan Police, the Sun would put Home Secretary Theresa May on the front page every day until the Sun's demands were met. Is that true or not? No. Is any part of that true? I, I didn't speak to Number 10 or the Home Office um, about the McCanns until, I think, after um, the campaign had been won. And then it came up in a conversation that I had, and I don't even think directly with the Prime Minister. I think it was one of his team. Well, we can, we can find out in due course whether this is true or not, but I must repeat it to you. It is said that you directly intervened with the Prime Minister and warned him that unless there was a review by the Metropolitan Police, the Sun would put the Home Secretary, Theresa May, on the front page every day until the Sun's demands were met. I is know. that true or not? I did not say to the Prime Minister... Uh, I will put Theresa May on the front page of the Sun every day unless you d give me room. I did not say that. If I'd had any conversations with Number 10 directly, they wouldn't have been particularly about that, but they would have been if I'd been having a conversation. The Sun was leading a major campaign with a very strong letter on page one to start the campaign and anyone who knew me would have talked to me any or politician would have talked to me about it but i did not say that i don't know who said i said that but we're going back to sources again but could uh, could we ask this were you part of a strategy that involved your paper putting pressure on the government with this sort of implied or express threat? Um, I was certainly part of a, a strategy to launch the campaign in order to get the review for the McCanns, yes. But I, I think the word threat so is, a bit, is, 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 is too strong. Well, give me another word then for threat, could you? Persuade them. Persuasion. Right. And in your own words, Mrs. Brooks, define for us what the strategy was. Okay. So, um, the McCanns were, were were deeply upset that there hadn't been a review. It seemed incredibly unfair that they hadn't got this review. Um, you only have to read um, their book to understand the, the, the trauma that they go through. So, we said, we'll join forces with you. And Dominic Mohan and his team went away and constructed a campaign. I cannot remember when the idea of the letter came up. It may have even been my idea to do the letter. I can't remember. But the campaign was launched in order to try and convince the, the government or convince the Home Secretary that a review would be the right thing to do. Do you know how it came about that the review was ordered? No, I, 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 I can't remember. I'm sorry. Such a lot has happened since then, but... You must have been told, Mrs. Brooks. I, I remember Dominic Moen telling me that the review was going ahead. And the son had won, in other words. He, he didn't put it in those terms, but he said... Well, actually, I think he said the McCanns had won. Mm. The Sun headline on the 14th of May, front page, is as a result of its campaign, the Prime Minister was, quotes, opening the Maddy files. Do you remember that one? Um, I, I remember the Sun winning the campaign, <coughs> McCanns winning the campaign, yes. So this, this is not a, you say, a case study then in the exercise of power by you. I'm not suggesting that, that the end result was right or wrong. Many would say it was right. There should be a review. I'm just saying the means by which you achieve the objective. But, you... it, it, but it could be said that a review of Madeleine McCann's case with everything that gone on was the right thing to do. We presented the issue, uh, we supported the McCanns in, in their determination to get a review. It wasn't new, they tried before, before the election, and the election had come into, and, 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 and the Sun um, and, the, and, the, and the Home Secretary clearly thought it was a good idea too, because I'm pretty sure 
it wasn't it wasn't a long campaign it wasn't like Sarah's law over you know 10 years it was I think it was quite short yes we didn't take very long because the um, government yielded to your pressure didn't they and it took all of about a day well perhaps they were convinced by our argument hmm. there, there, there are always two sides to the coin here that, that, that of course everybody would say on one level money should be spent but the campaign to date I'm told has, has cost two million pounds and some would say well maybe that money might have gone somewhere else they're, they're, it's, it's never clear cut is it the, the, what, what camp the Madeleine McCann campaign? Well, no, the operation which started up, the review, which was called Operation Grange, I understand. Right, sorry. Mm. Well, Millie, Millie, perhaps you would say all that you were doing was, was reflecting the views of your readers. Is that it? I think in, in that case it was an issue that we brought to the readers, that we explained to the readers that a review hadn't taken place and that... Um, the, we presented the McCann story, as in the mm. reason why they wanted the review. I think that absolutely chimed with our readership, and the campaign was started with a very heartfelt letter, and and the politicians were convinced our argument, or the McCann's argument, mm. was correct. It also chimes with the commercial interests of your papers, because this sells copy, doesn't it? Well, campaigns can sell um, newspapers. Um, I, I think the serialisation of the book actually um, was, 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 was good for circulation for the Sunday Times. I'm not sure how well the um, campaign was in circulation terms, but there will be a matter of record. It may, it may have been. I deal finally before lunch with one other example, just to put to evidence on this. Mr Dominic Grieve at one point was the shadow Home Secretary, wasn't he? Yes, he was, yes. Do you, do you remember a conversation with him over dinner in which um, uh, you discussed the Human Rights Act? I do, yes. And to cut to the quick, his position was in favour of the Act and your position was not, if one wanted to distill it into one sentence. Is that correct? I, I, I don't think that's quite right. S similar, his position... Was that it was a shadow cab? It was a shadow cabinet dinner, and um, his position was that the David Cameron's promise, um, or should we say, the Tory Party's promise to repeal the HRA and replace it with a British Bill of Rights, I think was the plan at the time, was not so should not be so easily promised to papers like the Sun and the Mail, the Telegraph. Mm -hmm. And um, so it wasn't that he was pro it or against it. He was he was just making the, the legal point that it was very difficult to do. Were you impressed with him after that conversation? Well, he, the as it turned out, uh, he was absolutely right. But at the time, um, his it was more his colleagues around the table because they'd made I think they'd put out a policy announcement that it was going to be in the um, manifesto, they would repeal the HRA. David Cameron had written for The Sun explaining this. And so the, con the dinner conversation was quite heated as he was the only one at the table saying, actually, um, mm. I admired him standing up to his uh, shadow colleagues like that. And as I say, mm. in the end, he's turned out to be correct. Didn't, didn't you tell Mr Cameron after that conversation you had with Mr Grieve you can't have some, words to this effect. You can't have someone like that as Home Secretary. He won't appeal to our readers. Move him. And that's indeed what happened. No, I did not tell Mr Cameron to move him. Um, what the conversation, as I say, it was a very heated conversation, borne out by his colleagues were trying to almost silence him at the table because he was, in effect, saying one of the promises the Conservatives had made to the electorate was they were going to repeal and it, and it was almost the opposite way around that they were concerned that his view was not to be taken seriously and as it turned out he was entirely correct did you give any advice to mr cameron as to whether mr grieve might move on uh no no in fact after that conversation 
No, sorry, it is important to remember Mr. Cameron wasn't at that, com uh, at that dinner. Sorry. Did you indicate to Mr. Cameron in any way what your view was about <coughs> Mr. Grieve? No, in fact, um, Mr. Osborne and Mr. Cameron did the opposite to me, where they were at pains to explain that Mr. Greaves' view, which has now proved to be entirely correct, was absolutely not their view, and they were going to repeal the HRA and replace it with a British Bill of Rights, and that Mr. Greave um, was, was mistaken. Right, just before we break, uh, could I take you back to this uh, issue that we've bounced around several times, which is who is leading who, yes. do you think that at least in part what you were in fact doing, to use your own words, was bringing issues to your readers as opposed merely to responding to your readers' interests? I think that's correct, yes. And I'm sure we'll come back to it this afternoon, but I would like you, your view, which you can reflect upon, which is this. You're obviously, everybody's entitled to be a friend of whomsoever they want to be a friend. That's, that's uh, part of life. But can you understand why it might be a matter of public concern that a very close relationship between journalists and politicians might create subtle pressures on the press who have the megaphone and on the politicians who have the policy decisions. Yes, I can understand that. All right. Um, two o'clock. All rise.